Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Nick the Booksmith, and we're gonna play Bill Nye the Science Guy today. At least those of you in the States will know who I'm talking about. Um, we've been talking about um, a little bit in the comments in some of my videos and then also the students of the booksmithing course were also talking about um, tea and coffee solutions that we dip our pages in and how that might affect the paper as far as acid. So um, there were some, some ideas thrown around about uh, neutralizing acid and that kind of thing. So I decided to do a little experiment today and I decided to film it so that we could all see what what happens. So these are the four specimens, if you will. This is brewed tea and this is just a, a, a black tea and it's, and it's brewed. This is brewed coffee and then these are instant, instant tea and instant coffee. So um, I also have um, some pH testing strips. So we are going to test the acidity of each one of these before and then we're gonna do something and then we're gonna test them to see if it neutralizes any of the acid, to see if it does any good at all. So these are the little test strips and what these things do is not focus. That's what they do. They, they don't focus and then you don't get to see what they are. Oh my goodness gracious. There we go. So um, that's what they look like. And then there's a chart on your bottle and it shows you how acidic or alkaline something is. And then if something is neutral, neutral is right around the 7.0 range. Um, you, if you want to do this for yourself, you need to get pH test strips that have a pretty wide range. If they don't, if they don't go down far enough or up high enough, um, then they do, don't do you any good. So these had a decent range. They don't have a one to 14 range. I was going to have to order those off of Amazon and I just didn't do that. So this should be, this should be fine for our purposes. Okay, so first let's do the um, brewed coffee and you just dip it in and swirl it around. And that's what happened. And let's match it up. It is very acidic. If, it, if you can see, it matches up to the very, the very acidic end. So way, way low. So there's, there's that one. We'll put that guy there and take another one. Let's see how acidic the black tea is. Let's see, it's pretty similar. A little less acidic maybe, but still pretty acidic. Okay, let's try the, the uh, instant. So here's the instant tea. It looks pretty similar, a little lighter. It's a little lighter on the bottom. So the instant Oh, sorry, the instant tea isn't quite as acidic as the brewed tea. Um, and let me tell you what I did is each of these has one cup of water in the glass. And like I said, this was brewed with one, uh, one tea bag. This was brewed with one Keurig cup. I wanted to keep it nice and even, so I used a Keurig, and I it's one Keurig, so it's one serving. And then these are, um, this is a tablespoon of instant tea and a tablespoon of instant coffee to these one cups. So let's see, let's see how, how this looks like. One, two. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So this one, man, this one's even way more acidic. It even goes off the charts this way. So wow, that's real. That this is the most acidic so far is the um, instant coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. So the instant coffee is the most acidic. I would say the next acidic would be. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. The other three are pretty, pretty similar. Pretty similar. I would, I would think that this one is the one that has the darker on the top. I, so I would think that both coffees are more acidic and then these are less so far. Okay. So we've got that done. And now what we're going to do is we are going to attempt to neutralize the acid with some baking soda. So just for demonstration purposes, I thought I would use a teaspoon of baking soda per per cup and see and see what happens. So let's add one teaspoon to each cup. Stir these around. And I've decided that I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes to make sure that the baking soda completely dissolves before taking another reading. Because we don't want any residue on the bottom. We want to, we want to be able to use all that, all that baking soda. Okay. I'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, it has been five minutes and I gave these another little stir to make sure everything was all dissolved. Oh, okay, let's take our testing strips again and see what we come up with. So one, two. Oh, wow, look at that it turned it absolutely alkaline. So it went absolutely the other way. Look at the difference. Of course, now this is dry, so it's a little, the color isn't exactly like it was. There we go. So this is the acidic one, and this is the alkaline. So it took it all the way. So I'm thinking a teaspoon per cup <laughs> is too much. Okay, again, same thing happened to the tea neutralized. Again, still too much, <laughs> too much, too much. Um, so I will have to do a test with maybe, you know, half a teaspoon or see what happens. Okay, this is the instant. Okay, so the instant didn't go quite so teal. It's sitting around mm, probably seven and a half, which is almost optimal as far as neutral, neutral acid or neutral, no acid, no alkaline. So the instant tea neutralized almost perfectly with a ratio of a tablespoon of instant tea per cup and then a teaspoon of baking soda added to it. Almost neutralized it perfectly. So, and then I'll just tell you, I used, this is the only thing I could find at the store that wasn't like flavored or sweetened. So I just got that one. And it was like four bucks for this big container. I'm thinking it would last a minute. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> so let's try the instant coffee. And see if that got new, cause that was our most acidic one. Okay, let's see. Okay, we're sitting about the same as the instant tea. So very, very close to neutral um, in the low seven range. So, my dear ones, success, right? It was a success. Um, you know, we talked about baking soda neutralizing acid, which is basically, you know, chemistry 101. But until you, until you read it on a, on a testing strip, it's really hard to know exactly if you're adding enough, um, if it's neutralizing it to the right point, if it's going too far over into alkaline. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot until you actually test it out. So with the brewed tea and coffee, um, a teaspoon was too much for each cup.
So, I mean, we could probably take that down like maybe to a quarter of a teaspoon and try that again. But a teaspoon with the instant was almost spot on. You could probably go a little less than a teaspoon per cup because um, it would it, it was closer. And now that it's starting to dry, it's going it's going even further into the alkaline. So these are darkening up, not as much as these though. So again, a teaspoon per cup is the most that you would need to put in. You could probably take it down and you'd get it further down in here. Okay, so for everybody who is um, concerned with archival value of their, of the papers that they are binding into their journals and their, you know, their albums and different things that they're making, um, if you want to neutralize the acid, if you're gonna tea stain, the baking soda definitely does work. I just, by the way, I just use Arm & Hammer, just plain old, bake, nothing special, baking soda. And um, yeah, so not bad, right? So make sure though that the paper that you use before it even gets tea dyed, um, if it's super acidic, then at least what you're adding to it won't be, but you gotta watch you gotta watch that too. You gotta watch the paper that you start out with. Now, most paper, the way it is um, manufactured nowadays, most of them use an alkaline solution when they, when they process paper. Um, but there are still some out there that, that don't. So, depending on where you live in the world and depending on the brands of paper that are available, to you personally, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that that might be a fairly easy thing to find out, even if you had to call the company and ask them if they use an alkaline or an acid solution to process their paper. Because just regular, just standard typing paper, you know, in those big old reams, I mean, are they always marked acid free? Um, so, if they're not, you might have to do a little digging to see if um, if they are. So anyway, just a little tip on that. So I hope everybody enjoyed the experiment today and I hope this helps you out in making your decisions on your book making, your journal making, and um, attempting to make your papers more archival if that is what you want to do, especially people that are putting photographs in their books. Um, this might be very important because the acid can break down the photographs very, very easily um, if they're not sealed in. Acid also will deteriorate your paper faster. I mean, it's gonna take a long time, but if you're gonna be passing something down from generation to generate, or you hope to, um, you want that paper to last as long as possible. So this might be a little something that you could add. It's simple, cheap to do, no big deal. Um, I am going to further test. Uh, I don't think it makes any difference in the outcome as far as the paper, how it dries. Um, or if you iron it or bake it, it shouldn't make a difference there. So, um, but if, if I run into any problems with that, I will definitely update you with that as well. So, all right, guys, thank you for joining me today. And um, I will catch you all very, very soon in the next video. Bye, guys.